Oh. Alright folks, well, um, we've gone through a bunch of the basics here at Behavior Beast for you. We're still talking about operant conditioning. We're still kind of just getting into the topic at this point. You probably feel like it's getting quite complex. It is, alright? You're probably starting to go, well, what's the real utility of this? We're going to talk a little bit about that today, or in this video. Um, but I want you to think about a couple of things first. So we're going to put the reinforcement, the punishment, the antecedent stimuli, and the consequent stimuli. We're going to put those together for you uh, now into what we call the three-term contingency. Okay. So the three-term contingency is really simple. We often call them the ABCs of behavior analysis or of behavior. Right? You have the antecedent, you have the behavior, and you have the consequence. Okay. So the antecedent stimuli come first, the response, behavior, um, and then you have the consequence, the reinforcers, the punishers, the extinction, that sort of stuff. Okay, so when we put all of those together, it becomes the three-term contingency. When you put the three-term contingency in action and you start to see it out there and you, you learn that particular responses happen more often in one context than in another, we call that a discriminated operant. Okay? So the discriminated operant is just simply saying that you engage in certain behaviors with a higher frequency in a certain context than you do in other contexts or in the presence of other stimuli. Right? So antecedent stimuli. So when you start to do this enough and we start to understand how it really get, happens, we call it stimulus control, that your behavior is operating under stimulus control. I only talk this particular way in the presence of, your, of a camera, in the presence of Brad, right? I'm not this exciting when I'm at home. Well, maybe I am. Talk to ask my wife. Um, so anyway, so this discriminated operant is just saying that we engage in one pattern of behavior in a context more often than other contexts. That comes about through stimulus control. Stimulus control leads us to understanding what an antecedent really is. It is called a discriminative stimulus. There are lots of types of discriminative stimuli. There are discriminative stimuli for punishment. There's discriminative stimuli for bet. Of, uh, I don't know what bet is. <laughs> I, said, I was trying to think of delta, S delta, okay? It, look it up. Um, we'll, we'll do a video on it too. But bet, I guess, works. Um, you'll understand why when you understand S deltas. Um, but so so we have S delta. So that antecedent is really a discriminative stimulus. Okay. Um, so that allows us to get to um, uh, stimulus control, discriminant operants. But the three-term contingency is what kind of goes around the whole thing. Uh, so when you then think about behavior as a whole, you think about behavior some really 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 complex stuff. As Skinner said, it is a it remains a very difficult subject matter. It is not easy, all right, to understand complex behavior especially a human organism. We engage in tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of behavior, huge amounts with broad variability, tons and tons of things going on. Uh, so we have to work on that. So when we talk about the history of an organism, what a person has learned throughout their life, those things that a person has learned throughout their life, that came about through their reinforcement history. And the things they can do is called their behavioral repertoire. All the stuff that I can do, from welding, to building cars, to talking about behavior analysis, to playing poker, to raising kids, to scuba diving in the river that have been in some of the other videos here, that, my reinforcement history, led to that behavioral repertoire. So the repertoire of the things you can do, how did you get there? Your reinforcement history. Why is this important? Because people think reinforcement and punishment is not sensitive, and it doesn't produce enough about individual differences. We're all different. Every dog is different from every other dog. Every human is different from every other human. You get the idea. We have different behaviors. Our ontogenic responses that have been selected for over time is our reinforcement history. And those different behaviors that we engage in make us unique. It makes me different than you and you different than me. It makes us all the individuals that we are. And some people like to argue that you can't explain broad differences in behavior using these terms, and they're just full of it. People that say that just don't understand what we're talking about. One of our jobs here at PSYCHOR through the Behavior Beast series and other series is, is to help you understand all those complexities and all those little pieces that make those differences. And I beg you to hang on and listen and watch and uh, review some of these other things, especially the ones that might be a little more challenging for you because it helps you understand the complexity that is life, that is nature, and that is behavior. Behavior isn't simple. We have parsimonious, a parsimonious understanding of behavior, but that doesn't mean it's simple. So hang in there, watch the rest of our stuff. There's tons and tons of stuff out there, and we're gonna help you along the way. Ask some questions and subscribe, because I'm getting hungry, as usual. That's a regular joke now. Maybe, maybe I'm just losing weight. I'm really hungry. Anyway, I digress. See ya, that's it.
I, I got nothing else for this chapter.